ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. That's Santa, a.k.a. Greg Allison. That's Galactic Gregs. <laughs> Coming to you on Christmas Day. Well, the kind of a Christmas gift of a topic you like to hear about is the prospects for life on other planets. Specifically this time, intelligent life that can give a radio signal, not just from any place, but from the very nearest star, Proxima Centauri. Yes, Proxima Centauri has apparently, seemingly emitted a radio signal that is highly suspect and indicative of a potential alien civilization. But of course, it's not really aliens, or is it? Well, according to uh, former Air Force General and Director, former Director of the NASA Ames Research Center, uh, General Simon Pete Warden, <laughs> he says, well, it's 99% point, well, 99.9% .9 certain it's not alien. Ah, but based on what? Well, that's just our intuition, basically. Because <laughs> we always really find some other explanation for these things. But this is another wow signal. Uh, the one where the, the final uh, several years ago wrote wow on the, on the charts where they got it. But the funny thing is, we didn't even detect this. It was sitting in our data since uh, April and May of 2019. And an intern by the name of Shane Smith pouring through this data found this signal. Now, if this turns out to be an alien signal, he's going to be the most famous intern there ever was. <laughs> well, it just so happens this was a study uh, being conducted by uh, Mr. Andrew Simon, actually, with the uh, University of uh, California, Berkeley. Uh, but it was paid for by a rich billionaire, uh, Israeli Russian. And <laughs> that's kind of interesting how these billionaires have been making a lot of cutting edge uh, science and developments in space technology and things like that. Yeah, well, this guy is uh, Yuri Milner and he put a hundred million dollars in this project. But more interestingly was he really wasn't directly looking for alien life or radio signals. There were ex well, they were using a radio telescope, but <laughs> in fact, the 210 foot uh, uh, Parker dish in uh, Parks dish, excuse me, in Australia. So it's kind of interesting that um, what they found, because they were actually looking for flares from uh, Proxima Centauri. Now, see, the problem is that's a red dwarf planet, uh, star, and these red dwarf stars put out lots of flares that make them, um, or tend to, that may, that may make them uh, not suitable for life to develop within their solar systems because they're smaller stars, the planets are closer, and these stars seem to be more energetic with throwing these flares out, which can be really damaging to life, especially technical civilizations if you're throwing out a lot of flares, like civilizations that would send a radio signal. Well, it just so happens that there is a planet there that is potentially habitable because it is in the, in the habitable zone and it's proximity. Uh, B. So Proxima B is in the habitable zone, but since it's orbiting close to the star, it'd be one of these so-called eyeball planets, and that one fa face of this planet would be phase-locked toward that star at all times. So what would happen? You would have a spot there that would just be super hot, and all the air would come around the planet and well up there and come back around and, and, and actually go uh, back in on the other side, probably a big storm on each side where it's facing the sun and directly opposing the sun, and pretty good winds, you would think, going around this planet where this would occur. But the habitable zones probably wouldn't be right at the permanently shattered cold area or right in the uh, baked desert, I was supposed you'd have right there facing uh, the center where the star is, but somewhere around the edges, hopefully where the sun's mostly shining, right? Or there's <laughs> uh, or the star in this case. So uh, it would, you'd think it might be a tough place to develop a civilization. Maybe one's just visiting. <laughs> of course, it's conjecture because, you know, you know, the probability would be that this is something from, you know, a satellite or another signal. But here's the interesting thing. There's, there's some very interesting characteristics about this signal. Uh, and and uh, the, the study, as I said, was led by Andrew Simon. And what he was saying is that this is a very tight signal uh, of the type that is uncharacteristic of what we find in nature. As a matter of fact, it was 982.001 megahertz. Very 
precise narrow band. Uh, and uh, he said that, you know, that just wasn't typical of what you'd find in nature. So he said, we don't even know how you would do this with, with natural sources. So it could still be a satellite or something like that. But, 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 but there's one more interesting thing about this signal. It has a little bit of a frequency shift, kind of like a Doppler shift, that would be just perfect to correspond to an orbiting planet. It's exactly what you'd expect to see if you were on a planet that was orbiting. Because as you're coming around, it's more blue shifted. As the planet's going away, it's red shifted. Blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. <laughs> Think about this when you go to bed. Is there aliens on our nearest star that are coming to get us? <laughs> well, you know, it's the odd thing that we look out into the universe and, you know, we should be seeing evidence of top three civilizations, you know, top four civilizations. We should see these Dyson spheres out there just all over the place as long as, 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 as the universe has been here and as many planets as there are, as many habitable zones as you think there were. And by the way, I knew Freeman Dyson. Great man, nice man. I met him, you know, through the National Space. Center. I also knew Simon Pete Warden. He was actually a member of my policy committee when I was chairman of the policy committee of the National Space Society. You know, I was really honored to have a guy like him. He would actually attend committee meetings and he would participate. Real nice guy, smart guy. Uh, <laughs> so I have a lot of uh, admiration for uh, General Warden. All these things said, because then he's saying, yes, Bobby, not aliens. But, you know, we can't rule it out, especially with that little Doppler shift, you know, blue. Red. I say blue and red. It's not technically blue and red. It just means it's the, the, the waveforms are shifted a little compressed when it's coming at you, a little higher frequency and a little lower frequency going at you. But, you know, how much can it be when it's, I guess it's the mean, <laughs> it's 982.001 megahertz. Hmm. Fascinating, as Spock would be wanting to say, right? <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> is it a satellite up there? Maybe it's something, well, maybe some other government secretly wants something to the moon. It's going around the moon, giving us a Doppler shift like that. <laughs> How do we get that? <laughs> or is it air and instrumentation? Some lack of calibration. <laughs> Swamp gas from Venus as it orbits Uranus. <laughs> I don't know. Of course, it doesn't do that, but you know. All these little things that we uh, use so often to, uh, you know, say these things are normal. Maybe it is. But Pete Warden said 99.9% .9 probable. But what about that zero one point? <laughs> if there are civilizations out there, we should be detecting something. So I, I, I think I'm going to do a whole series of videos in the not too distant future about why we're not detecting anything. Why are we really seeing anything? Well, maybe, well, Tabby Star supposedly had these splotchy occasions of the star being dimmed and bright and dimmed and bright. And some people thought that might've been the formation of a virtual Dyson sphere of clumps of space habitats. But then they wrote it off and said, nice, nah, well, it'll be just asteroids, space debris, blah, 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 blah. What was it? <laughs> we should be set a lot of stuff out there. It should be undeniable. We should, at this point, we should be able to look up, but we're not. So here's another topic I'll bring up is the conjecture that our, our Milky Way galaxy is full of civilizations, dead ones, the bones, the relics of civilizations gone by because we tend to self annihilate. That's a part, that's a topic I could dwell on quite a bit and other things such as these flares may be taking out our civil, uh, civilizations. Should they ever have existed? So far, the only thing we can prove is that it's a possibility that we're here now. <laughs> Of course, those that say that we're assimilation would argue against that. But then if there were assimilation, there's got to be a bigger civilization that would create such a thing. And then that may even be harder to explain away than this idea that we're trying to explain ourselves in, as a digital <laughs> program, like a matrix. <laughs> oh, well, some things that people have thinking, you know, just for fun, right? <laughs> so this does offer a good puzzle. It's a good question. Something good, fun to ponder for Christmas, right? Ah, maybe you know, there's aliens. Are. So I'll bring you a Christmas gift to ponder of an idea that we may not be alone. In fact, they might be just right next door at Proxima Centauri. Did I say Alpha Centauri? <laughs> it's Proxima Centauri is the star. And uh, Proxima B is the planet. 
that is in the habitable zone. And maybe it just maybe somebody's there. Did they evolve there? Did they come there from somewhere else? Are they from our future? Our civilization from Earth in the past. Did the dinosaurs once rule the Earth and develop a civilization and film got away before they wiped themselves out? And that's where they're hiding today. Oh my gosh, one of these earthlings that come get us now, they're all they were descendants of the little rats we used to step on all the time. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Come on, it's Christmas, guys. <laughs> yes, it's Christmas. So, you know, it's fun to have a little fun, right? That's the idea, but this is a fun topic to explore, to think about, to ponder. What is it? <laughs> what is it? And you know, so so this, uh, yeah, about this Shane Smith, if he were to discover something, wow. <laughs> All right, my friend. Oh, yeah, this I, I did mention hundred million dollars that project. All right, my friends, you can support my channel by supporting my sister channel, Green Gregs, by clicking some of the links I'll add below for you know Green Gregs, you know. Uh, Please, you need for long space missions, long duration food that lasts a long time, <laughs> it's like 25 years, maybe in case you get stranded on the way to Mars or Venus, <laughs> stuff like that. And seeds, you need seeds to plant when you go to Mars. So yeah, I'll put links below that. But you know, I'm gonna do a lot more videos on uh, my Venus colonies. I've had people, hey, there's no point going to Venus, you can't mine Venus. Oh, yes, you can. And I'm going to show you that. I've shown you how you can put a habitat in, in the uh, atmosphere of Venus. I'm going to show you how to mine Venus. I'm just going to show you how to how you could actually put a starship into the Venetian atmosphere without landing, fuel it, and take off again. And how you can use that as a strong back to build these habitat concepts. I'm going to show you. I've got a lot of stuff on that. A lot of things I've been developing on this. I just haven't had time to come out and produce the videos. I do have a busy day job. Uh, and uh, I do wear an alternate identity as Green Greg's on occasion, in which I do another YouTube channel that gets a lot more views and makes you know uh, a few pennies, and so I'm more motivated over there, I guess. <laughs> well, trying to save the universe, that's the, the game of that channel. And by the way, I do have Market Garden, Worm Farm, quite a few other things that, in the books here. Plus I am acquiring another property <laughs> in Arizona. All right, my friends, so, Subscribe to my channel, bang that notification bell, and click all so you can get more videos. I will bring more. I'm going to try to get more regular on this channel with these videos because they're fun. And I got a lot of fun topics. I've done a lot of fun work on this Venus thing. I still want to bring you a Rocket 101 video. I want to talk to you about hazards such as lithium ion batteries. And we may have to go back to this topic of, um, you know, guys in Boca Chica, you need to get the heck out of there. <laughs> you really do. So I'm going to talk about that some in the future too. All right, my friends. Thank you for watching. Have a, a wonderful weekend coming up. And once again, ho, 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 and Merry Christmas.